Hello everyone, this is Keybox. In this video, I will walk you through one of the best classes in the Elder Scrolls Online, which is Magicka Warden. And in this video, I will walk you through everything that you need to know about this PvE DPS setup of the Magicka Warden in the Firesong patch and probably on the future patches as well. So this is the fully buffed stats, as you can see. And still though, I'm missing some light attacks and some buffs, also from some other uh, teammates as well, I'm missing some buffs. And this build made completely for the Foreman dungeon content and for the solo play. And if you are ready, click subscribe, thumbs up and we will go into the video. First of all, we will start off with the character stats and if we go into here, we have 64 into health. As usual, if you know me, I like to run the Tracing Stranglers Mythic and for that reason we have 23.6k maximum health. Also the Tracing is completely buffed right now, so our health is decreased by 6000 and if I put this on you can see 26.5k with the Warden buff that we reach for that health. And 23.1k Max Magicka, 13.8k Stamina, 5k Spell Damage, 49.3k Spell Crit and 7.2k Spell Penetration. So if I put the Potion on, you can see 6000 Spell Damage and 61.2% spell crit with 1.6k magical recovery and this is not even still completely not buffed up and the manda stone is the thief to get crit and the food is clockwork food it is kind of expensive but it should be fine to afford that much and the portion that we do have is the spell damage portion we are not using heroism or something like that we are using the spell damage portion and the race is the high elf you get magic stamina as a sustain and a little bit uh, max magic as well 2k and then you get a uh, weapon and spell damage by 258 and about the gear item sets on the front bar we have double dagger order threads, one of them Narn, one of them charged with flame and the poison glyphs. Basically it gives you crit, spell damage and it gives you on the final one 8% crit damage which is amazing. Also you get a little bit crit healing by 8% as well. I do use order threads in order to uh, show you that it, this setup is since it is craftable this is quite accessible for the majority of the people but if you want to replace it you can easily replace with the Sulzan from the Rock Grove and you can kind of mimic the setup a little bit better with the Sulzan but for the sake of the video and for the majority of the people or this threat is just so easily accessible and for that reason I'm running or this threat in this video and we have double dagger order threat as I said, flame poison non charged, and we have three jewels of the order threat, all of them blood thirsty to get more weapon and spell damage, and all of them with the spell damage glyph on it. On our back bar, I still do run perfected inferno staff with infused and weapon damage glyph. It is still amazing to have a uh, AOE based attacks because in the dungeons you can like you know that there's a lot of uh, ads going on like the most of the phases of the dungeons or even arenas like black rose is created with the ads like there's way too many ads compared to the bosses for that reason we do have perfected inferno stuff and on the helmet we have one piece slime crow with the crit chance light armor device with the max magic and we have the tracing hands just right here it is also light armor device and max magic glyph on it and the other craftable set 
is the mechanical acuity. You get 100% crit chance when you fully proc it and it has a 25 seconds cooldown but don't let it deceive you because it is just amazing uh, damage output and this is just straight yellow 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 hits and this is just crazy damage. We have chest, shoulder, waist, legs and the feet is the mechanical acuity, all of them divines with the light armor and with the magicka glyph on them you get stamina magicka, weapon spell damage and then 100% crit chance after this. So those are the sets and as I said you can replace order sweat with the Susan as well. And if you are ready we will jump into the skills now. On the front bar to apply the chill status effect we have arctic blast and it will also heal you as well and it will deal uh, 1.6k frost damage every two seconds as long as it is up and it has a high high chance to apply the chill status effect and it's it is very well uh, synergizing with the warden passives as well we have channel tech acceleration to get the minor force for one minute and a little bit speed so you get 10% crit chance and 30% moment speed from it we have bird of prey for minor berserk increase your damage down by 5% it is only on the front bar by the way the fourth skill is a deep fissure I'm not running the other version it is like dealing the poison but this one does kind of a little bit more damage and also applies minor breach and major breach to the enemy as well and this is just crazy for 10 seconds and it deals very huge damage two times and our spammable is a screaming cliff racer it deals 8.88k magic damage and if you are away from the enemy around 7 meters you put them off balance and if you hit them you get uh, 100 and weapon spell damage 100 weapon and spell damage and if they are unbalanced uh, off balanced you get quadruple of that number this is just crazy and as an ulti we have eternal guardian it deals 2.5k magic damage and sometimes swipes all enemies in front of it dealing 9.2k magic damage and stuns down for two seconds and once you summon it you can activate the ultimate for 75 cost and it will maul an enemy for 13.7k magic damage and it will deal 150% more damage to the enemies if they are below 25% health plus since we are running dual wield in here we do have <coughs> the buff here like they also stunt immobilize and you get deal basically 15% more damage with the dual wield attacks with the light attacks by the way so both of them is kind of execute and you shouldn't miss any light attack at all on the back bar again we do have eternal guardian ultimate as well also the ultimate responds by itself if you don't want to lose a little bit of time but otherwise you will lose the damage by the way if you don't put it up when it uh, dies on the back bar we have the blue betty it will give you 5000 magic to you over 25 seconds and it will give you also weapon and spell damage by 20% and every 5 seconds it will remove one negative effect from yourself also alternatively you can literally spam the skill and remove the negative effects manually we, ha we have unstable wall of fire to proc the VMA perfected inferno stuff on the back bar we have the fetcher infection it deals 16.4k magic damage over 20 seconds and also every second cast of this ability deals 60% increased damage this is also good and as an extra the fashion flies rip through the enemy's flesh and it will put the effect of minor vulnerability for the whole duration which is 20 seconds it will increase the enemy's damage taken by 5% this is good 
The fourth skill is an AoE grappling shards. It has a 12 person 12 seconds duration. And when you put this on basically the enemies around you they will get stunned for 3 seconds and it will deal 614 frost damage every 1 second for 12 seconds. Also, enemies hit are overcome with the bitter cold, reducing their moment speed by 30% for 3 seconds as well. And damage done is based on your maximum health and it has a lot of high chance to apply the chilled status effect and eventually proc the bridle of the world. And the last skill is the leeching wines. When you when you do this or yourself or to other people, when you do this on yourself or to other people, they will get healed for 2.3k health each time when they take damage. And the healing effect will t uh, work every second as well. Also, uh, whoever has this leeching wines and the enemy attacks to that person, they will get the minor lifesteal debuff on themselves which uh, for 10 seconds, which they will heal you and your allies for 612 health every 1 second when you damage them. It is the second healing, basically, you get a damage heal, you get a heal, when you have the wines on yourself and the guy that is hitting you is gonna get minor life steal debuff on themselves and when you hit you also get an extra little bit 612 health as well but on our front bar we have something crazy arctic blast is just mad 16.9k heal and you know like this is not even fully buffed, 19.3k, it is just amazing crits as well. So keep in mind, you don't need like any other stuff, but Leeching Vines is just definitely helps for the group to sustain the healing, it's just a passive healing for everyone, and since you are the Warden, why not use it? About the champion points, on the green one you do what you like, on the blue you cannot do that. So you need backstabber 10% crit damage done when you are flanking the enemy from back or from the sides. You have fighting finesse, 8% crit damage and crit healing done no matter what. Since we are running order threat and uh, acuity, you need those crit damage stuff. Even though you can consider being Khajiit to push more crit damage as well and we have deadly aim increase your single ta target attacks by 6% and we have mastered arms increase your direct damage attacks by 6% again and on the red one we have rejuvenation 90 health magic and stamina recovery and in here we have sustained by suffering 150 health magic and stamina recovery when you have negative effects on yourself and then the key of sustain is the siphonic spells. When you kill the guy, you get 1.5k magicka each time, no matter what. And we have one flex, which is boundless vitality. You get 1.4k maximum health. You can remove it since with the Tassian and then the Warden buff, you, we have 26.6k health. So you can remove it as long as you keep this Warden uh, passive buff up you can remove the boundless vitality in here and then you can actually go into here and then you can run celerity and get 10% movement speed so this is the champion points about the rotation the rotation is like uh, you need to keep it up everything the whole time especially channel acceleration and on the back bar the blue body and then the leech, you should keep this up the whole time. Apart from it, what you're gonna do is drop the grappling shards, put the blockade, and you're gonna put the fetcher infection on the enemy as well. And when you come into the front, just make sure that Arctic Blast is up. It has a like a 
20 seconds cool down so you shouldn't have any problem keeping this up and also of course have the bear up all the time and put this on when it dies and our main damage and debuff is the deep fissure you can see it just pops up once and then after a while it pops up again the second hit deals more damage and you should just wait don't cast it again just you should just wait for the second hit as well because the second hit hits to the enemy way more higher and our spammable is the bird the screaming cliff racer like if i show you right here it is a screaming cliff racer off balanced and then if i hit again i just basically got the weapon damage and spell damage buff in here too because I hit to the enemy when they are off balance and I was several meter away. So this is just amazing setup. As long as we just keep the buffs up all the time, especially channel acceleration, Arctic Blast again, and put the deep fissure, back bar, Betty, wines, blockade, grappling shards, and then the swarm. And when you confront, just keep the fissure on again and then light attack. Screaming Cliff Racer, Light Attack, Screaming Cliff Racer, and you can use that bear to execute the enemies as well. It will hit very hard, around 100k, and this is very cheap, just cheap ulti, 75 ultimate. Alternatively, you may ask, why I'm not running the Frost stuff? You can run Frost stuff, of course, but then your crits will go down, even though uh, we do have acuity just with the potion you can see 61 crit we have so if you remove the dual wield you will lose uh, around 10 percent crit so you will have like 50 49 48 percent of the crit it is like around 10 10 percent you get from the dagger just running two dagger and you're gonna lose the crit so for that reason it is still viable to run the dagger even though after it got nerfed but it is especially got nerfed for the pvp guys like you get um, crazy damage on the ice stuff of course in here you get like a 10 percent more damage done when you have ice stuff but you can sacrifice this to have um, crit because the build kind of evolves around the crit but that doesn't mean that you cannot run frost stuff just go and do and craft the frost stuff of the order threat or even suzanne and just craft the ice stuff just you can basically do it as well you may a little bit lose the crit but it is still viable to do it that way too so i hope you guys enjoy this video give thumbs up subscribe comment below what you think about this setup and give me any suggestion as well and tell me if you're going to run this setup or change some stuff and what you're gonna change and we can discuss it on the comments below as well and join the channel as a member to get all the benefits that channel perks has i see you all in the next video take care of yourself guys have fun, bye-bye.